On the 27th of June 2015, the world learnt that Christopher Russell Edwards Squire passed away. For many, he was seen as a, a fantastic bass player and member of YES throughout his life. For me, it was much more than this. For me, it was like the loss of a friend. He's been not just part of my life, but my entire family's. To illustrate this point, I want to show you this. This is a copy of Close to the Edge, which belonged to my nana and my granddad, and they bought it around the time it came out, and played it relentlessly, and is one of my dad's early childhood memories. This carried on when I was born, and some of my earliest memories are not just music, but in life, and my dad playing it to me on the way to school. I remember being blown away by it even then, and especially Chris's bass playing, in which my dad would always sing along to in the front of the car, and it explained to me who Chris was. When I got into music myself, aged 11, my first exposure to Chris Squire was the Yes album Fragile. I remember sitting on my bedroom floor with it on really loud and just being blown away by him, especially Heart the Sunrise. The first time I heard that bass riff, all I wanted to do was go out and buy a bass and learn it. Unfortunately, as I found out when I finally bought a bass, it was not that simple. I've spent hours since trying to play along with Yes records and even Chris Squire, Fish Out of Water, which again, I've spent hours listening to and attempting to play along with, with very little success, of course. And it's safe to say, although I never met him, and never got to see him live, I owe so much to him. He's the reason I play bass and one of the main reasons I fell in love with music and has given me hours of joy and will continue to do so my entire life. If I ever got to meet him, I'm not sure I'd know quite what to say, but I know I'd want to get across a few things. First of all, thank you for the music and thank you for inspiring me in so many ways that I can't even begin to thank you for what you've done. It's hard to imagine that Chris Squire departed from us six years ago now, but his legacy will continue to endure in musical terms. And I will certainly never forget the first time that I saw him play live on the 28th of October 1977. That was the Going for the One tour at the Empire Pool Wembley. And the sheer power and apocalyptic force of his bass playing, his pedals, combined with that intense delicacy and his ability to construct melodic and harmonic lines that really helped to shape the music, that stayed with me too. I guess if Fish Out of Water, his defining solo album, had been a Yes album, it would be one of my top four, along with Tales, Close to the Edge and Relaya. In 2018, I was really fortunate to be able to launch my book, Solid Mental Grace, Listening to the Music of Yes, at the 50th anniversary concert at the London Palladium. And of course that book is dedicated to Chris and it has uh, a unique picture of it taken by my uh, brother-in-law Kevin Roth in Indiana in 1978. And that's a really special connection for me. But perhaps the song that I think a lot of people overlook that I remember Chris for is Can You Imagine, which of course emerged from the XYZ sessions and then ended up on the Yes album Magnification in 2001. Can you imagine life from the other side? Well, in a sense, that's where Cress is at the moment. But for us, he will continue to endure and his music will continue to endure. Thank you, Chris. Hi, my name is Jim. I live in Northern California. I want to thank Miguel for giving us all an opportunity to say some words for Chris. I first saw Chris Squire in 1978 at the Tormato tour here at the Elkin Coliseum. That started me on a lifelong love of everything progressive rock, and especially Yes. Uh, when I was about 15, I was inspired to get this 4001, which I've had ever since, and a Sun amplifier at the time. I was fortunate enough to see them live probably 25 times, and very lucky to see The Conspiracy Show at a small club here in San Jose in 92. If I had to pick a favorite tour, for some reason the Open Your Eyes tour uh, in 99 was one that just 
still I just still have vivid memories of that concert. Uh, Fish Out of Water is, is my true desert island disc. If I only had one thing to listen to every day for the rest of my life, that would be it. Um, I have to say I was, I was truly shocked at his passing. I mean, I knew he was sick, but when he did pass, uh, it, just, it was the death of, my, of a true childhood hero. And I can't think of anybody else who was a bigger hero. So I think I'm out about him all the time. I continue to be inspired by him. I continue to jam along with records. Continue to keep my Rickenbackers. Uh, so thank you to Miguel for keeping his spirit alive, and thanks to everyone who's involved in these projects for keeping his spirit alive. Hey, this is JD. First time I seen Yes was by mistake, actually. Um, we sent our guitar player with his mother to get tickets to see Grand Funk Railroad, and uh, we didn't have cars yet. We weren't of age. And he come back with Yes tickets because Grand Funk was sold out. We were pretty angry with him, and he told me, listen, dude, you'll really like this band. They got a great bass player. I never even knew who they were. So he went to see Yes do the Fragile Tour, and I was a Chris Squire fan for the last 50-some years. And uh, there'll never be another Chris Squire. And uh, he was just great in so many ways. Chris, these are my words to you, from one fish out of water to another. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your phenomenal talent. There is no one who could ever come close to you, and there never, ever will be. I never got the chance to meet you, but I did get to see you on the Termato tour, on the turning stage, wearing the black and white striped suit, playing the white Rickenbacker, and that's a memory I'll take with me forever. I love you, Chris. Thank you.
Shadows of the fading light, nothing inside, nothing in. 